16 episode 16 episode which that's it what are we talking about today yo what's something in the gym you guys see commonly right you see somebody you know coming into the gym they're coming in and you see them every single day come in do something and then they look the same every single week every single month and the next year 2024 January, they're like, yo, bro, I have a goal to put on this much muscle. But you do them, do the, this, you see them do the same exact thing constantly, right? What's one thing that you guys notice is like the common denominator of people who look same year after year in training? Um, they're just working out. <clears throat> they're just working Not really out. training. There's exercising. Yeah, they're exercising. Exactly. Mm, yes. They're just right. going through the movements with no plan, very blind. And all the gains that they saw was the first two years. In the eight years, yeah. they've just been going through everything. Yeah. That's so what I would say. Yeah. Usually people just come, they exercise, they don't really have a plan, structure, and they don't have an intent behind their workouts. Yeah. It was kind of old time. Yeah. What are you going to say? I going to say, there's no, uh, people don't realize that they're not putting enough effort in. I feel like it's hard to see when... You're just kind of doing it, but then when yeah. you make the progress, then it's like, oh shit, what am I doing wrong? Well, obviously, you're doing certain exercises, you're getting to the gym, so it's not the consistency part of things. So it's probably something you're doing in the gym, and typically, I'd say one of the only things we can control is how hard we go in the gym outside of form and things like that. So outside yeah. of form and effort, and typically it's both. So let's uh for context purposes. Say someone watching this podcast, they were watching because when they go into the gym, their intention is to like put on muscle, right? They want to get bigger. They want to get confident. So, you know, they can talk to the ladies instead of just go and exercise and just move their body for health purposes, right? They want to put on muscle. That's the intention instead of being healthier. Health is obviously going to be part of it. And technically, you'll be more healthier per se with more muscle on you. But instead of just going to the gym and just working out, they're going in to put on muscle. How can they make sure they're training hard enough or with enough effort to put on muscle? What are some things? Progressive stimulus. <laughs> Progressive <laughs> stimulus. Yo, Rona said an entire paragraph and then he asked a question. Totally not scripted at all. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, actually, I was waiting I for even... him to ask the question. I just get like another sentence. Of... I, didn't, I didn't even write it down. That's why it was a bad script. So technically, there was a script. But... Okay, but training it progressive stimulus. What does that mean? Uh, essentially, you should be pushing yourself harder every time you're in the gym. And I think progressive stimulus is a good word because it doesn't just have to be more weight or more reps. It could yeah. also be that same weight for that same amount of reps. Felt better, you'd had better technique. You, um, instead of failing at like off your chest on a bench press, you were to, able to get to lockout and then it kind of failed there, right? So that's still you getting better progressively. Um, even though things might not change in your logbook when you're tracking the training, and you know for a fact you got better compared to last time, right? But for most people, especially if they're in the first like first one to three years, you're looking at adding more reps, adding more weight or adding more sets to your exercises because if you're just using the same 20 pounds to curl for the next five years, you're not, your arms are not going to get any bigger because they don't need to get bigger. They've been curling the same weights for X amount of time. And that's the only way your muscles are going to grow is if you give them more than they're expecting. And that's why they need to get stronger to be able to fulfill that. Yeah. Isn't there like five different ways, right? So there's, there's weight you would either increase the weight, increase yeah. reps, increase total volume, weight times reps times set, increase frequency, uh, decrease rest periods, uh, and increase your form, technique, tempo. Yeah. and then tempo. Yeah. So yeah. there's different ways that you could increase your stimulus. Um, and I would, I would almost make the hierarchy where I put the weight at the absolute last. Change everything else, and then the weight should... Uh... Don't just try to push more and more weight every single week. Maybe choose a couple exercises that you do that on. But majority of the time, I would try to progress through all the other stuff you just said. Like more, maybe a couple more reps or like a little bit more volume over time or better tempo, better control, 
frequency, less rest periods, instead of constantly adding more and more load. Because usually more load, most people tend to start sacrificing technique, right? Arm, yeah. Even Yeah. uh, another thing is you could add like intensifiers, number eight Yeah. intensifiers, Yeah. right? There you Um, go. that's a really good way as well. But yeah, I would say hierarchy would be form and then negatives, your temple. You want to standardize Yeah. those two and just Yeah. keep pushing the weight up. I Most agree. people, I feel like who are watching this, can probably do more reps Yeah, people. for the for the weight that they're using than Yeah. than they think because they'll think like, oh, I gotta do like three sets of ten, and they get to Yeah. ten, and then it's like, oh, I'm done. It's like, well, was Yeah. it one, two? How many more could you do? And then maybe on the second or third set, or even for the first set, just try and get as many as you can. And if you get like fucking eighteen reps on your first one, then it's probably a weight that's way too. light for you to be doing for three sets of 10 right um so then just try to figure out how many reps you can do and then go from there because if you're just stopping at an arbitrary number whether that's 10 12 or 15 or 20 or whatever that may be Yeah. you can do a lot more so don't cap yourself at whatever number you have to do just Yeah. 100%. You know, I, I think one of the biggest things with everything, the progressive stimulus is, I feel like people are kind of like smart most of the time. We're not smart, but like logical. It's like, okay, Maybe I'm giving too much credit, but like they know, okay, if I go to the gym, I have to lift weight and a bit more weight or a bit more like tension over time to let it adapt. Oh, But I think, I didn't do that. I think, okay, well, I'm just, I'm just, maybe we're, I'm being, giving too much credit, but what I think, what I see the gap quite a bit is like, um, people do something for like four five, six weeks, seven weeks and like, oh, wow, weight's going up, weight's going up or like their form is improving, whatever, all the newbie gains are coming in, but like six, seven weeks in. They're like, oh, weight stopped going up at a plateau, and they change fucking everything. They change every exercise. They change their order of the exercise. They change the complete workout split, right? So they change things too often where their body doesn't get time, enough time to, like, adapt and actually put on the muscle they want to actually get good at the technique and form, right? I remember taking, like, that uh, pre-script, the skill acquisition stuff. I think you were talking about it last time, Kags. Like, especially when you do more higher skill movements, it takes time to even just, like, learn them. Before people learn the movements, just swap the exercise or swap the movement. So they never actually get the benefit of getting jacked from it, right? So stop changing your shit up. Like, Mandraj, how long have you been running the same kind of split? Or, like, similar exercises? Same split? Or, yeah, so same split Oh, or, like, similar bro. exercise or whatever. So, same split um, um, since 2020, bro. Oh, Yeah. fuck. It's That's since... crazy. <laughs> so, Yeah. since 2020, Yeah. I'm running push-pull. Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. Okay, so, since 2020, I started push-pull, arms, legs. Yeah. Then, for two months, I was like, oh, let me change this up. I did push-pull legs, upper, lower. Yeah. Uh, but that was shit. I hated that. And uh, I went back to push. And then I got a new coach, AJ Morris. And he's like, yo, your weak points are this. He's like, what was your program before? I was like this. It was li My program was identical to his program. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, So, Yeah. yeah, I've been doing the same split. Even the exercises. Uh, bro, some of my most progress. Uh, I said this in the podcast before. Most of my most progress was in my garage gym in COVID. Yeah. I did the same exercises, same sets, same Number of reps for two Yeah. years, bro. It's Yeah. in my garage. Literally the same exact movements. I just kept increasing the weight. Uh volume I never adjust. You you get uh Ronan, you adjust volume a lot. I don't I never touch volume. Yeah. I like I only I like touch my like the density, the density of the set. Yeah. I I use volume as a way like if um Sometimes if I find on online, it's tough to communicate the failure aspect, like training to failure and having high training intensity, like Yeah. especially when we train like top set, down set. So say somebody gives like two sets and I see constantly like they're constantly recovering. There's like no soreness and nothing. Right. I'm like, yo, tweaking some volume usually ends up being like the key to start seeing some gains in the individual. At least that's what I find because volume is like. It's more like you're just taking away the failure aspect because by the time you get to that last set, your muscle is going to be fairly stimulated. It'll get to that effective rep part where you get those effective reps for growth. So I think volume is a way of doing that. But once they understand how that feels, then you can kind of that, – that's when I kind of just keep the volume the same. That's that's so interesting that you mentioned that, right? Yeah. Because you're like, I just want to increase volume so they hit more effective reps. Yeah. The way I think about it is like Yeah. I want them to keep the sets the same but learn how to train harder. Yeah. 
100%. so that way they could keep doing that because the yeah. thing is you know the thing i find with like when you increase volume you increase yeah. time in the gym for sure bro, a lot of people i'm just assuming right yeah a lot of people they don't have the extra 15 minutes to add to the gym yeah so they just rush through the last couple of sets instead of taking two sense. minutes three minutes they're yeah. like what the fuck this i gotta go home then just like you know rip the sets and just track it quickly so i just kind of make it try to get the most out of your um um sets as well plus recovery yeah. too bro like people are sleeping five six hours a day yeah yeah so i yeah, never yeah, never I go follow like a lot of the a lot of guys i train like they come to me and like they want to get better at squat bench and deadlift maybe that's just because i've that's what i've been doing for a long time yeah. so they like they come to me with that and it's just like they're like yo my bench press is not improving i think we should switch it out mm. i'm like uh, bench press is a skill you need to learn to get better at it there so go. more often than not i probably add in another bench session on, on another part of the week or i'll add in like another squat variation or add in another deadlift variation and it's just like you need to obviously get better at doing the skill yeah that's only going to come from you doing it more often not from you kind of going away from it and coming back to it because sure you might see gains in the new exercise like you guys are talking about but like that just comes down to you learning that movement again seeing those newbie gains in that movement. Whereas if obviously if you want to increase your bench, it doesn't make sense for you not to bench. It makes sense for you to bench more often. It's like riding a bike. It's like you're not yeah. going to go on a bike and then ride a scooter and then go swim and think your biking is going to get better. You're going to ride the bike fucking every day or three times. Yeah. Right? So yeah. that's just what I find when it comes to those certain movements in particular. It's like if you want to maximize squat, bench, and deadlift, chances are you're probably not doing it enough. And yeah might not make sense to do more squats in the same session because it's so taxing or more bench in the same session so learn to split that up in other different days yeah you know what's interesting bro with this whole swapping exercises i think a lot of the time it's not because of a plateau i think it's mental it's mentally not stimulating enough because when i talk to everyone in covid i'm like bro what you do for arms i just did bicep curls bro i just kept doing it over and over and over and over right so yeah. People genuinely have an idea. You just do the same thing over and over. That's what like literally training is. <clears throat> but you would never change an exercise just to change it. Like I've never heard someone be like, yo, um, the leg curl stopped progressing. The lying leg curl. Let's change it to something. Let's do dumbbell leg curl. Right? Because <laughs> it's like those are the only three exercises for hamstrings. Seated yeah. leg curl, lying leg curl, RDL. But it's like with chest and back, there's... And arms, there's so many exercises. I think people sometimes need that change just to keep them motivated or stimulated in the gym. Because, yo, training is pretty boring, bro, if you're the average, like, person, right? My guys watch different Jeff Nipper videos, and they're like, yo, can we do this? Oh, my yeah. God, bro. Can we I do this? hate that. I'm the like, Egyptian. it's not bad. It just keeps things yeah. it keeps things fresh, too, right? Which is cool. Sure. So, yeah. The meat and potatoes of it have to be pretty similar. It's not like we have to change the program completely every, like, four or eight weeks. It's like yeah. most of it's going to be the same, but if you're not doing a new bicep curvation, I don't think it's the end of the world, but like yeah. make sure you're giving enough time, like eight, yeah. 12, 16 weeks before you switch it out. Those, yeah, vi gotta, yeah. those videos are so nuanced, bro. Like they're so specific and they don't even relate to like 95% of the people. Like I had someone, I had someone message me. They're like, yo, did you see the new research on like length and partials? I started adding it to my workout program. And I said, I'm like, bro, you're 18 years old. Just get strong, bro. You don't have to worry about lengthening partials or this or that. Like protein, consistency, progressive overload. You'll build muscle, bro. Like you don't yeah. have to worry about that, right? No. Yeah. Um, but bro, that's I, I get it because that's what gets clicks, right? Um, it's new, it's exciting, it's fresh, it's the new secret or the new meta um, yeah. of how people build muscle. The the way I kind of approach that, because you know, like a lot of people, even I need variety, like in terms of uh, workout, sometimes exercises, I want to be swapped, tried this. Like I recently swapped out like the closed grip uh, machine, closed grip uh, bench press for the standing chest press. Closed grip. I saw you do that today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've been doing that. I've been loving it. I was like, oh, damn, this feels fucking sick. You do a was, neutral grip? Yeah, neutral grip. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And I've been, I've been finding my triceps like, oh, shit, like this is a nice little change in stimulus, right? Uh, so variety is nice and i think the way i kind of structure it and i always have like two to three exercises in every day or like yeah every day i'm like yeah, these exercises i can mess around with if the individual needs more variety or wants to have more fun with things right just to have like a little change and then those exercises i just like move around 
if I need to, or I'll add some sauce to it, right? Um, or like I just change the exercise order because then the stimulus starts to change a little bit again. Say like they've been tracking it, the same exercise, and like they've been hitting a plateau for like three, four weeks now, um, or it's just redundant. They have some shoulder issue, things like that. It's like, yo, just move the order of it. They get more range of motion through the exercise prior. And then the one they come into, they're like, oh, wow, I feel a different pump now, bro. And then the progression kind of starts off again, right? Um, so I think it's a nice way of like adding some change because that's what leads to consistency long-term for most people, which ends up leading to gains long-term, right? So You know what's, bro, it's interesting you mentioned that because we've talked about this point before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's like, when you make that change, a lot of these people, a lot of these guys, right, or yeah. just people in general, they typically start to hit actual true failure six weeks in. Yeah, for sure. So they never really get those effective reps. Exactly. To change it, but yeah. then on the other, on the flip side, you change it to stimulate them mentally. Yeah. But you, so you have to kind of like see but how it never really, it yeah, and kind of work towards that, which is tough. Yeah. Right, it's is- never usually the first six weeks, right? Like it's usually I find like after like the first four months, that's when I start changing shit up. Like yeah, after yeah, yeah. First, first four months, it's like the fucking yo, this is the foundation. This is we yeah. find out how good you move by sending videos in, like if your movement patterns are good. Because then you know it's hard to change things too if the guy doesn't even know how to do like yeah. retract scapula shit, normal stuff like that, right? Mm-hmm. And then you can play around with it depending on like actually I know one guy for sure. We were talking about him and like he loves a variety in the gym, right? So adding some sauce to it, it's more fun. Um, oh, yo, one thing I wrote a note down. When you were talking about volume and you were saying, I actually noted it down when you mentioned it. Uh, you know how I add volume and you keep it the same and you wait till the client gets or individual just gets to the point where they learn how to train hard? Um, I yeah. use volume for a couple of reasons too. Like I like using higher volume uh, on certain movements, like say like pull downs. And I'm volume when I say like two, three sets for like 15, 20 reps per se, just to get them in better ranges of motions. Like most people don't have good range of motion in like a lot of areas, like overhead, that kind of stuff. So I like using volume as a way of like just pumping them into a range of motion they're not used to being in. Because then they end up getting a better stimulus. Like three sets of cable flies before like a dumbbell press, for example, right? It's like, yo, like put volume into the cable fly, but then they get nice range of motion. And now when they do dumbbell press, they feel a little, a little bit better. They can stimulate the chest a little bit better. So I find volume helps create some range as well. Yeah, yeah that's why. The, the hard thing about this is, it's literally so you need so much context. For sure, it's for based the on the individual. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's so yeah. much context. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Like high volume, low volume, or normal sure. medium volume. It's everything's yeah. right. It yeah, just yeah, depends yeah. on the yeah. context of the situation. Yeah, I think the main thing is make sure you don't change your shit up too often because exactly. then you won't actually know if you're making gains off the thing you're actually doing, right? So let it do its thing. Let your body adapt. You know what's... A, yo, bro, I was just thinking about this analogy. Yeah. I don't even cook, bro. You guys know my meal plan that I get so much hate for. Oh, my yeah. goodness. Fucking hell. But if you make something, if you make something, right? If it has yeah. 18 ingredients and it didn't taste good, the next time you make it, you wouldn't change 17 of those ingredients. That's true. Yeah. Okay, is that a clip bro fucking clip that shit you wouldn't change 17 of those ingredients you would just change like one or two what you think is wrong right most or people I'm, don't most people no don't idea. do that though right most people like say like they've never been used to going to the gym or they've had shitty lifestyle they've been drinking whatever they're like you know what from starting monday I'm gonna wake up <laughs> yeah. at 6 a.m five days a week workout have a meal plan <laughs> vegetable chicken rice and then two weeks later they're like yo fuck this it's unsustainable. <laughs> yeah, that's what right? I'm going to mention, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So most so, people end up not. But yeah, like I said, that's a good point. Make sure you only change one ingredient because that could lead to the more gains that you were looking for. Yeah, and then you know like where you're going wrong and where you're going right. Yeah. You're talking about ingredients, bro. You know that like cake analogy? Like, uh, cat, cat, you know cake? The one that's like, okay, like Martha Stewart. I heard an Andy Frisella's podcast where he's basically like, Martha Stewart could give you the sickest recipe to bake a cake. Right, gives you the exact ingredients, gives you like 45 minutes at 400 whatever degrees, and you just let it bake, and you'll get a nice brownie cake, right? People would be like, oh, this guy said 40 minutes. What if I do 800 degrees in 20 minutes, and you fucking burn the cake, and the cake doesn't taste the same, right? So like most people, we give people the answer. We're just like, yo, what if I can do this faster? What if I train six days a week, even though I'm only sleeping like an hour every day for some reason? I'm not eating any of my meals, not hitting my macros. 
But this guy trains three days. I'm going to train double. And they end up getting not the results, right? Because they're not listening to the ingredients then to be put in to get jacked. Yo, but that's so interesting, man. I feel like that's everyone, though. Like, we don't learn from... Like, I feel like that's humans. Like, we don't really learn from, like, other people's mistakes. We kind of have to experience ourselves, you know what I mean? 100%. I they think the smarter people realize that. And you yeah. can pick up on other people's mistakes. But, like, bro, my dumbass had to go through it. You guys probably did the same shit where you're like, oh, this guy's doing it. For sure. Mm. But that's why we're doing this thing, whatever we're doing, right? It's because we're just talking from experience. And we're just, if somebody, like, that one, pers- one person that already is watching... If he ends up like listening, like okay, or maybe I shouldn't like just run myself into the ground constantly. You might actually grow, right? Like train as hard, recover as hard as you train, and you know your gains will be fucking crazy. Oh, well, that's true. I think it's the quote is um a smart per- a smart man learns from his mistakes, a wise man learns from other people's mistakes or others' mistakes or something. But no one does that, bro. Everyone's still not taking advice. But I literally used to train seven days a week. And I vividly remember this guy was like, oh, yo, how many hours are you sleeping? I'm like, oh, like I've been school full time. I work 40, 50 hours. And I only sleep like th- three, four hours a day. So like, why are you training seven days a week? I'm like, I'm serious. You know, <laughs> I'm going to get these results. And he's like, no, nah, you should. He's like, you should train four days a week. And I looked at my cousin. I'm like, this guy fucking doesn't know anything. Oh, fuck a pussy. What a dumbass. And yeah, look at it now, bro. Okay, so number one, if someone wants to put out muscle, they got to make sure they're progressing. In the, they're making some sort of progressive stimulus. Yeah. By all the stuff we mentioned, right? And the top ones being control, tempo, uh, form, sets, volume. Or volume is obviously rep, sets, weight. weight and then weight, yeah. Okay. And then you could also do frequency. So frequency. if you train legs every six days, yeah. a year later, if you train legs every five days, um, you could up that as well. Yeah. Or decrease that. Sorry. Less rest periods, things like that. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, second point. What's uh, another thing someone can do to make sure they're training hard enough to get juicy? It's gonna be auditing your workouts. So record what is audit. What is audit? Is that, is that the correct word? Like That's when you like audit, when you audit something? Yeah. It is. Yeah, when you bro, I got the dictionary app, bro. I told you I'm educated now. Dictionary. Is that is that the right word when you're auditing something? Like yeah, it is. It, it's right. Yeah. Come sure. on, bro. Come no, on. I was just surprised by the word, bro. It's amazing. I've never yeah, heard it's that. It's out of my vocabulary, bro. It's all uh, But yeah. looking over, looking over your overall training videos. Yeah. So Kegs, Ronit, me, uh, we record what? Maybe every workout, maybe every other workout. Yeah, so bro. looking it over and seeing if you're actually training hard. Because a lot of people think they're training hard. Mm. And as humans, we don't want to seek discomfort whenever something gets uncomfortable or like, oh shit, you just re-rack it quick, right? But when you look the video over, you're like, damn, that wasn't that bad. Yeah. Um, I actually just, you know, fucking be- became a bitch. I could have did like two more reps. Yeah. So I'll do that pretty often. I'll look at my like training videos once a week, just sit there and just look, look, look. Um, so, and you can tell if your form, you can also tell if your form and technique is good or not. There you go. A lot of times people's form is really tight for the first eight reps it's perfect but when things start to get hard the elbows flare and they're just pushing um so look everything over study it right and you'll make a lot more progress and record yourself in the gym now with a massive tripod that's taking up a lot of space but uh yeah watch the last episode for that yeah yeah honestly bro like recording yourself is easy way of like self-coaching too because like all the stuff you just said you realize your form on this exercise, you're like, yo, I don't know why I didn't feel the muscle, but you look at the exercise, you're in like half range of motion, or you're just doing some neck show, you have like all the way here for something, or like dumbbell press. And then the second thing, obviously, being you notice after the last rep, you're like, fuck, man, that looked like way too easy. I probably have like 16 <laughs> more reps in me. Usually, yeah. I find like if somebody's, you're already doing well if you're following some sort of structure or program, but most people aren't. But if you're following a structure and the structure says like 12 reps for this exercise, and you get to the 12th rep and you feel like you have like six, seven more. Don't just stop there. Um, keep right. going until you get to that point where like it's pretty much failure, right? So recording yourself will tell you 100% that if you're going close to that or not, right? Yeah. I got a, I got a good question, yo. So because with all of our clients, we obviously ask for training videos, right? Yeah. Uh, like every single week or check-in. Yeah. But sometimes I don't get training videos because, bro, 
these guys train at peak time. Yeah, so if yeah, someone's yeah. training at peak time, the gym's flooded, bro, with hundreds of people, yeah, hundreds of 13-year-old shirtless TikTokers, right? Yeah. What, what would you do? Okay, go to this jacked guy in the gym and be like, am I doing this properly? What if you're shy? Because a lot of people are. <laughs> Gags is like, someone's shy and uncomfortable in the gym. What the fuck? Oh, not going to make it. <laughs> <laughs> well yeah, most people are already a little bit self-conscious going into yeah. that's why they have like a coach and shit but that is true if someone actually that's a really good thing where like most people think the jack guys are more intimidating but they end up being the nicest people in the gym because they've gone through the most like in terms of training and they understand the hard work it takes and they understand somebody starting out because they've been where you are so kind of view it from that perspective like you know that guy probably will help me the most out of anybody um, cause he's been through the same thing I'm kind of trying to do. So that's one. Um, the second thing I, I usually tell people is like, yo, like when it's busy, I totally understand too. Cause it's tough recording in those times, man. Like even me trying to record, it gets tough. Like it's, uh, if, especially like a good life or like commercial gym when it's peak peak hours, like everyone's walking through everything. Even if you put your phone down, like someone's going to like 10 people are going to walk through it. You won't even get the proper form. Or like, if you try to record, you'll get like a weird angle or just like your armpit and you see like one arm moving. Um, so like, it doesn't even give you as much context. So totally understand it. I would just pick and choose certain exercises. The way I kind of frame it, I tell people like three exercises from every workout, um, to record on a weekly basis. And then I'll be like, Hey, this week record this one. And this week record this one. And then that way they don't have like a full workout to record. There's like only a couple. So it's not as like tedious of a task. It's like, Oh, I'm just going to record three at this peak time instead of like fucking everything. That's what I say too. Like two to three yeah. training videos a week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've had people they like record an entire back day. Yeah. And when you give them the feedback, like it's good. It's but bro, good. you could only you could only take so much feedback and implement it right exactly. away. Right. You guys, yeah. I, I thought you guys were gonna say this. I thought it was like I thought it was gonna be pretty obvious. Just ask a yeah. trainer that already works there. That's true too. Usually a peak time <laughs> with training other trainers, right? Yeah, yeah. ask just already ask a trainer that's like works there. Yeah. They're already like uh yeah. qualified, right? To yeah. give you the advice. And like help yeah. you out with that. Just ask them. Be like, yo, is it my form and technique good? And then you'll build um more comfortability in the gym. And then you could always reach out to that person. Do you trust good life trainers forms? Yo. Okay, so I'm I don't know if I should say this, bro. <laughs> I don't know if this is gonna be crazy in like 10 years, you know. I've worked at good life, trainers are good, trainers are bad. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. depends what training. But that's yeah, every, choose the choose the jack trainer. Yeah, that's every gym though. Like yeah, we've, sure. how do, how should I say this? We've seen. Damn, say like, it, I, I can't. Bro, really, <laughs> I, I used no, to. No, 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 I can't say it, bro. I can't say it. People are gonna start hating me. But what we to, say is like yeah. we've seen trainers. It, we've seen trainers over the last couple of weeks, and we're like, bro, what the fuck are they doing, right? And then you're like, which one's the trainer actually? So, yeah, just try to see which. <laughs> try to see um. The trainer board, right? A lot of times, Good Life or these gyms have a trainer board, and then you could read information about that trainer, right? Mm -hmm. So this person played soccer, or if you're powerlifting and you're trying to do a deadlift, you know, read someone that has like powerlifting, and the next time you see them, ask them a question. Yeah, or if you're doing an exercise, chances are someone in the gym is probably doing the exact same exercise, unless like it's the only machine in the gym. Like, say you're doing deadlifts and you look over at Good Life, there's probably like five other people doing deadlifts. Look at the guy who you think, or girl or whatever, who you think is doing it with the best form and is using a decent amount of weight, who looks like they kind of been doing it for a while. Go up to them, like, bro, can you help me out for my deadlift? One, it's probably going to gas them up. They'd be like, oh shit, someone asked me for help. So they're happy to help you. Two, if not, they're just going to be like, oh, I can't do it right now. Go ask someone else. But like, that's also how you like, build community and relationships in the gym too, right? It's like, yo, now you have this person who obviously knows a little bit more about training. You can bounce ideas off them, have a fucking friend, have more accountability and stuff too. But um, if you're doing like dumbbell bench press, chances are if you had a good life and you look over to your right or your left, it's probably four, three, three to four other people also doing dumbbell bench press. Go to the most jacked one. Be like, yo, am I doing this properly? And they're happy to help out. So yeah. I don't think you're ever alone when you go to the gym unless you train by yourself in like a home gym that at that point you kind of fucked also one thing to ask i mean one thing to add damn one thing to add is ask three to four people the same thing 
like over a couple of weeks because someone might give you advice, but if you're new, you don't really know if it's good or bad advice, right? Whereas if you ask three, four people, you could pick the common thing that everyone's saying and be like, okay, four people are saying the same thing. I'm going to start doing that, right? Yeah. And the person who says, uh, because obviously if you're going to be like, yo, bro, but like, I don't want to talk to people at the gym. Like, uh, what if like they're training, their headphones in, or like I'm shy or I'm self self-conscious, things like that. We've, I've been there. Like, I don't want to talk to people at the gym, shit like that, right? Ask for form tips. Um, but if that's the case, I would tell you from experience, if you, the faster you start asking people questions and you start talking to other people, you'll realize everybody feels the same way. And people in the gym are the coolest people in terms of not coolest people but it's really good people to like associate with because they're in the same kind of journey as you right that way your environment is going to start improving and you'll actually feel uh this is, this is a fun way of being accountable like now like so we say we go to the gym and then we see each other it's like one of the things that's like a indirect accountability so you go that guy's killing it that guy's killing it um and the more people you start talking and kind of surrounding yourself at the gym with and you know of you'll notice you guys start holding each other more accountable too, which will actually help you stay consistent long-term and your form is going to improve and then you actually get jacked and you'll actually learn how to put yourself in uncomfortable situations, which would also help you grow in other aspects of life. So it's a win-win all around, bro. So just go ask bro, you, people for advice. You can't go through life and not expect to talk to other people and expect to get better. Like, Bro, with this, people... Yeah, bro. Bro, with this, people think they can. That's the... That's the point because like, yo like you're gonna be 18 19 if you tiktok dance and you can be making like 100 g's a month right you don't have to talk to anybody well, 100 years from now people are gonna be dating robots bro yeah imagine banging robot bro everything they already fucking them. <laughs> yeah they already fucking them so Dude, it's only that's, time. that's crazy bro oh, okay okay <laughs> that no, get to, okay, let's so... not escalate this too much <laughs> the last time you guys escalated too much <laughs> Focus. Okay, so actually, this uh, this point solves pretty much everything. So, um, having some sort of training partner. So you know, like say, like you're trying to get into the gym and you're not finding yourself training hard enough, or you're finding hard to record your sets. Try finding a friend or try finding a training partner. Um, usually, there's probably friends in your group that always say, "I want to get into the gym," this whatever, but they're all probably loafing. There's probably one guy that's actually serious. So try to find that one guy, and then go to the gym. yeah. Listen, when you're finding a training partner, find someone that's going to kind of elevate you, right? That's already yeah. ahead of you. That's already doing it. That's already yeah. consistent, right? Um, because if you, like Ronan said, right? Accountability. If the people you hang around with, that's who you're going to become. If your training partner's always slacking, always canceling the gym, that's what you're going to be end up doing as well, right? So find someone that's like three, four steps um, ahead of you kind of like a mentor right um because i feel like a lot of those people like they actually enjoy helping people like if so, well, if someone was five steps behind me and they wanted to train and they could fit like my schedule i would do it yeah that's fun because you see progress in them so fast too yeah literally yeah. week after week bro yeah they're changing I feel like, okay, so there's different stages of trainers. So somebody's been training for a minute. Then they want to train with somebody, someone who's already elevated. But the person who's elevated also wants to train with somebody who's elevated, right? So how does, because like everyone wants to train with somebody who's like, wants to make them better, right? Like someone's yeah. been lifting for 10 years. They're like, fuck, this guy's first year of his training. I'm not going to have the same intensity in my training if I'm training with him. If I'm teaching him the whole time, right? So that's, that's something like, I'm not saying they'll say no, but they might feel that way over time. Cause like, yo shit, like this is actually ruining my intensity. I'm not pushing myself as hard. Right. So that could happen. Um, so try finding even somebody if they're like close to your thing. Yeah. Slightly you know, ahead of you, slightly ahead slightly, of you, slightly ahead. Um, and like in the start, you may actually see like you've been training for a couple of years. Um, even somebody who's just starting out, it's fine because at least initially they can help you record videos and like you can still help them on the form and it can be like a give and take kind of thing. You give them some tips and they help you record. You record their shit. You push each other a little bit. Um, but then as you both elevate in your training, you may need to find, you know, new training partners. Unless you guys find a really good bond and you guys stay forever. But I don't think you should train with the same person all the time. I am 100% in agreement to that, bro. I feel like no. you can only do it for a couple of weeks. Maybe, but like, 
I don't want to be rude to you guys, but like I don't want to train with you guys all the time either. Sure. Yeah. I'm not with people too, right? She's like, one is different training styles and true. It's like they like guys talked about sometimes you want to train with people like you don't always want to train below you. Like if you're that person giving the help, you don't always always want to train with the person who's not pushing you. But like it just like if you can find different people to train with. Yeah. But have yeah. you have you trained with anybody long enough? Like a year plus? Um uh, when I first started. I go in with like my same guys yes, that I was same guy. Yeah. I just like it's cool, but like yeah. at some point, like you gotta learn as much as you can from that person, or they're yeah. gonna learn as much as they can from yeah. you. And it's just like because you have know, like I'll be I'll be honest. The most gains I've made when I was in Guelph and I lived in the basement, but I had a training partner, just Jeet. He's ripped, he's jacked, and bro, we lived in the basement together. We would go to the gym every single day, same time. We we're following a Jeremy Bundia program, two years in a row, and this because we were living together. And both kind of had a similar mindset every single time. Same pre-workout meal, same intra-workout drink, same workout, same post-workout meal. Every single day, and you eat the workout meal, play a little bit of 2K. It was the like same exact routine. Made the most gains, bro. So, like, I think if you can... But that person somebody, was identical to your schedule. 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, and we were identical training styles, bro. Like, yeah, everything yeah. was same. Intensity was messed up. We would put headphones in. We would, like, give it whatever in the start, talk a little bit on the treadmill, do, like, stretching and shit. But after that, you just, like, lock in, and you just do your thing, and you just get it done. And that was the best gains I made because, like, he would tell us, like, yo, bro, like, you had two more reps there. I was like, yo, bro, your elbow started flaring. Maybe go lower on weight, things like that, right? So I feel like if you can find somebody, which is obviously hard, that's where we're getting at. It's hard to find somebody who fits your schedule like that. Um, it can be a game changer. So if you have somebody like that, wicked. If you don't, like Kag said, it's good to change it up. That way you learn different things as well. You don't get bored of it, but... That's tough. Yeah, that is tough. But Ronnie, you, tra- you train with a lot of people, bro. Yeah, now I do because yeah. bro, like, I feel I like love, two yeah. for like two two and a half two months. I saw you training with someone new like every single week. I was like, holy yeah. shit! Yeah, yo, it was a good little so like that was I think last year December November December. Yeah, November December January even. That, it yeah. was end of my cut, and I was like, yo, like I was starting to be like a little bitch when I was training. I was like, oh, I'm low calories. I'm doing lots of cardio lean or whatever so every time i trained with somebody i couldn't be a bitch so i trained hard every single session and i felt like that helped keep my intensity up like consistent even while being at like the lower end of body fat or like cutting so that was one reason i was doing it and obviously like i looked kind of sick so i was like record more content right that was the other reason too and when you record he just, con- he just needed a cameraman yeah <laughs> when, when, when you record actually this is cool when you record videos too you end up going harder because you know like okay either you're gonna send it to somebody or like you're gonna watch it or like you're gonna post it somewhere right so you know like okay you have to s- go decently hard right yeah. so, you can't so like, give up yeah external accountability is crazy right but literally like i see guys i'll be training with somebody i start phone out i'm like i'm gonna record this one i'm like yo what happened the first set like elbows here you're like loose and you were like saying stuff to me while doing the set this one you just like didn't say one word everything was like locked in and, like, you're pushing, and, like, I saw so much better stimulus. I'm like, what the hell? So it's like one click can change your life. What do they say to that? They're like, yo, bro, you know I I do have to do for the camera every <laughs> single time? I was, like, I was like, yo, bro, if you train like that normally, it'd be crazy. But doesn't, actually, uh, yeah. doesn't uh, Rogan have a quote like that, Joe Rogan? Okay, you probably... Uh, probably has it, yeah. Walk, uh, live your life like you have a documentary, uh, documentary crew filming you or something like that? Something, something like that. Like that. Yeah, 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 something like that, right? Yeah, bro. So you have like, so if you think like that's like someone's recording you and someone's like seeing this, bro, you're always going to be eating your meals. You're always going to be training hard. Your recovery and everything's going to be on point. Yeah, that's big. Be the main character, man. Don't be, be a main character. Yeah, what Kag said. Can we clip that? I don't know if you can clip that. It's right. with... Bro, I'm the one that does the clips, bro. I'll clip it myself. <laughs> <laughs> That. Okay, so we said uh, progressive stimulus, uh, record your stuff, have a training partner. Training what was partner. the last one? Um, training partner was... Intensity, right? Intensity, yeah. A lot of people be comfortable yeah. with being uncomfortable. I'm not just looking for quotes, bro. This guy's a coder, yo. Coder. Is that a word? I don't yeah. know. It is now, yo. Coder. I gotta yo, search guys, that dictionary. The dictionary. Do you guys know that podcast, the Chris Wilkinson guy? Who, uh, yeah. Chris was, Wilkinson? That he... Williams. he Williamson, he does like every time he does a podcast with Alex Ramosi, he like says a quote and then Alex Ramosi responds to it with like a whole rant. And then he says another quote and then Alex Ramosi 
another one. And I was like, yo, he's just saying quotes. He's not even saying like, <laughs> and then it, it's like a weird way of, have you heard that? You've heard it, right? I've heard that one. I, I, I was it. tripping. I, the first time he did it, I'm like, okay, makes sense. Like the first quote, the start, the things, the icebreaker kind of thing. But then the second topic was the same. Like he just said another quote and the quotes are nice. I'm not, I'm not saying they're wrong, but it was just like a funny transition of like topics. I think Alex from movie got some sick quotes. Very, yeah. his quotes are very. Um, he's a re- very realistic person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, I like his quotes. I can re- like, I relate to that thought process. Yeah, yeah, I think he gets it from a lot of other shit too, like yeah. books and stuff. Like he'll be like, yo, like he says it, but like someone else has already said it. He just like obviously uses his own flair. Yeah, this guy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that guy. Oh my god, I got a blur on. Yeah, brain dead today. Why do you have blur? You're black screen. This guy. This guy. This guy. Yeah. Yeah, that guy. Oh, I gotta search this out. You gotta search again. Okay, so our last thing was intensity, right? Um, going to failure. Yeah. I, we talked about this throughout the whole thing, but the biggest underlying fact, if you want to build muscle, you want to take your muscle to a point where it's like, oh shit, I'm failing. That means I gotta adapt, and then I gotta grow, so you can actually put muscle on long term. So you're gonna get to the point where actually close enough failure or intensity wise, where your body needs to adapt and put on muscle. So please train hard. You got to be like making faces, making yeah. noises. Head veins got to be coming out live. Crazy. Crazy. Um, fucking got to be shaking by the end of your leg sets. Like Crazy. Not doing any of that. Chances are you're probably nowhere close to failure. Yeah. Yeah. What are indicators if you're close to failure? No, all that stuff you just said. Breakdown of form and um, concentric slowing down. That's the biggest indicator. Love it, bro. Concentric slows down. Yeah. What is what is, con- con- what is yeah, what is concentric? So it's the oh, I was about to say pushing or pull. So it's like if you're doing a chest press when you're pushing yeah. up, it'll nice. like really, really start to slow down. If you're doing a pull down, lat pull down, when you're pulling down, it really starts to slow down. Okay, sick. I'll see this in my trick I'll see this in my client training videos. Like they'll do 10 reps and it'll just be like one, two, three, and the tempo will just be like this. Yeah, same. So while I'm watching their training video, I'll be like, it's one, 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 one. One one, I'm like it didn't slow down at all, so you weren't even close to failure. Yeah, no. Yeah. So that's the biggest indicator, I'd say. Okay, so that means if your form breaks down, or if your if your form doesn't break down, it's the exact perfect every single rep, even till the end. That's awesome. But once it starts breaking down, that's one indicator, and the second one is if this should start slowing down. Yeah, that's another indicator, right? Um, so please push yourself to that point. And all the things we mentioned, like when you record yourself, you'll be able to visually see that. If you have a training partner, they'll be visually be able to see that, right? If you have some sort of like structure to like progressively stimulate the muscle, you'll be able to see your logbook. Like, yo, I've been doing the same exact thing for like 19 weeks. Maybe that's why I'm not growing. So if you're progressing on that eventually, maybe in the first four weeks, you're not even getting to that point still. But then when you keep progressing, like Manraj was actually saying, they'll you'll learn how to train hard because you'll eventually get to the point where the effective reps start to kick in right so if you give it enough time instead of constantly changing it up yeah. right? and also with your with your logbook um have notes in your logbook so for example like if i do um like if i'm doing leg press right i did five plates if you look at my logbook i did five yeah. plates on leg press and i did six reps for like six weeks in a row so it just said like six 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 right but what I did is I put, oh shit, god damn. What happened? <laughs> no, okay, I just made a face. But with that, like I just put a note, right? So I'd put like 6.00000001 and I'll put like barely got it. Okay. Then the next week I'll put like 6.001. Nice. I got it easier. And then I'll put easier, easy six reps. That's I'll it. put like how hard it was. So if I did five plates um, and I got six reps, I would put like, nine out of 10. And then the next week, if I got six reps again, I would put like eight out of 10, right? Cause it's just a number. You can't really tell how hard it was. Cause sometimes like you get the rep, but you don't have a spot. So you can't go for the next rep. That's true. Depending on the exercise, right? So you kind of have to stop That's if true. that makes sense. So That's always, true. um, you could put like a rating of like zero to 10. Yeah. No, that's perfect. Okay. What else would you add? Anything else? That's good. No, I think that's pretty much it, yeah. So if your intention is not to exercise and actually build muscle, make sure you guys do the following. Progressively stimulate the muscle with all the things we talked about. And to tell yourself that you're actually progressively stimulating, record your sets, right? 
So you actually train, have a training partner and then train close to failure. Yeah. Yes. This is a serious educational podcast. Today. This is fucking education. We're trying to get Jack, but we're trying to this 20 is, uh, small people. Yeah. A lot of value. Yeah. Good one. Good one. Yeah. That was very good. No jokes at all. No jokes at all. Very clear and concise. That's it. That's point. Clip guy. Oh, we had that. We had that one mess up. What was that? When yeah. you're like, um... why would you want to say it again? Oh yeah. You're talking about dating robots. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that one's going up. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh. <laughs> yeah, okay. it's like, oh, well, think about this. I was like, what the fuck? Bro? Let's talk about training. But yo, you mentioned it. Like, what would it? That's like obvious. No cags. Like, if you talk about, never mind. How did, how did it come up? How did it come up? Yeah, like, oh, you, we're gonna be dating robots like, in the future. No, no, but why did I say that? What What did you guys say before? We we're talking about how people think you can't. Like, I was like, um, how are you gonna expect not to get better at anything if you don't talk to people, whether that's in the gym or outside the gym? Like, you have to talk. No, to people. no, no. It was something with the phone. I was something with the phone. Run it. Yeah, 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 no, he was he was saying that, and I was just saying, because now everyone has their phone, so they don't need to talk to people in real life. And you were like, yeah, in the future, people are going to just date. People. Yeah, yeah, we're dating yeah. robots, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, hope you guys enjoy the podcast before we <laughs> fuck it up. Um, Enjoy, comment, and let us know if you guys like yeah. it. Okay. Bless. Let us know what we should talk about next. And let us know, please. Two people, comment. Comment. Okay. Shazar, I know you're watching. Yeah. <laughs>